Finally, I get to talk about a real game, Rollerblade Racer. Yeah! Rollerblade Racer was published by High Tech Expressions, which to me sounds like a futuristic massage parlor run by rub and tug robots. They were responsible for many relatively obscure games for the NES, some of which like Funhouse and Muppet Adventure, I'll get to at some point. If you haven't guessed already, they weren't exactly the American Konami, more like the Panamanian LJN. However, what their games lack in good sound, story, gameplay, graphics, replayability, and pretty much every characteristic that would leave you to believe something was fun, they more than make up for it in mouth agape what the fuck is this factors. Thankfully, Rollerblade Racer is no exception. God damn, this game is gold. The first screen is this dude in full pads and helmet standing next to two traffic cones, head to toe in all pink, including the rollerblades draped around his shoulders, arms at his side. He says, Hi, I'm Kirk. I just bought a new pair of rollerblades. He needs you to enter the Super Rollerblade Challenge that for some reason means that if you win, he'll qualify. Huh? I guess I'll do that for you, random stranger. <laughs> My god, he calls his outfit his blade gear. <laughs> Shit, it's too good. Okay, I've calmed down. I'm centered and ready to roll. Kirk, let's shred. So basically, Rollerblade Racer is a really shitty Paperboy knockoff. I was never a big fan of that game, but that's only because the eponymous Paperboy had no style and could not carve the pavement like my boy Rollerblade Racer. Poser! You basically just go forward as fast as you can and jump over everything in sight. Beautifully, because it's rollerblading, the programmers gave you two authentic rollerblade leaps. Wheels straight back and legs beneath you, or wheels straight out in opposite directions and legs split out like a crazy person. Bellissimo. The same enemies spawn every three seconds as you go, kind of like watching an old Flintstones where they walk past the same background over and over and over. The dogs and tricycle kids are super easy to avoid, but for some reason those tiny cracks in the road cause my guy to spill like crazy. Throw in a pebble, and you've got the true life roller villains captured right there. After you help Kirk borrow a feeling, you head to the city which is somehow even simpler and easier than the last level. If you find the right line on the screen, you can just go full speed and never interact with a single obstacle. I'm not kidding. The only enemies here are puddles and dogs, and you will never ever come close to touching either of them, even as you pass the same thousand wet golden retrievers on repeat. After that, a sea of traffic cones. The horror! There are two urban levels, like the beach and the park, that are pretty tough and probably the only hard part of the entire game, but that's because the space you can skate on is super narrow. Here you'll encounter the game's mini bosses, piles of sand, and stairs. I love this old newspaper reading guy who sticks a leg out to trip you, and this horribly neglected baby who throws balls at you. Jeez baby, I'm trying to blade here, lay off! The last level, the competition you were busy busting your wheels so that Kirk could qualify, is all the obstacle courses in a row. It's supposed to seem daunting or something, but you can just hop on the sidewalk and casually skate past the whole thing. And that's the end of the game. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I have not laughed this much or this often while playing a video game in some time. It's so painfully easy and poorly programmed that it is of course quite comical. But honestly, what they really nailed with this game is how rollerbladers were perceived in the 90s. No one then, or now for that matter, was ever considered cool for blading. Not even the aggressive inline featured in games like Skitchin or rad movies like Airborne could make it a tenth as cool as skateboarding. That's because to skaters, all rollerbladers were a bunch of Kirks, unironically rocking single colored outfits that matched their blades, reminding you to always wear full pads every time you glide. 